Good evening. This is Strange Love, and I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Welcome, babies. Good evening, and welcome to Strange Love Live Tech Edition. I'm your host, Cami Chaos, and as always, I'm joined by Dr. Normal, and tonight our guest is Curtis Chen. Hello. How are you doing tonight? Good. Good. Yourself? Mm. Before we go any further, I should probably explain that I have I have a cold, um, so I don't normally sound like I smoke 12 packs a day, <laughs> and if I cough in your ear, I'm very sorry. <laughs> um, Curtis is here to talk to us about a multitude of things, most, most of which you can find uh, by going to snout.org, which is your yes. website, yep. um, and you can find out more about what he's doing in his everyday life at, at Sparkle on Twitter. Yes. S P A R C K L. Correct. Yeah. And we're going to start off by talking about five twelve words or fewer. Okay. Want to tell us about it? Yeah. So five twelve words or fewer is a thing I've been doing since last October. Mm-hmm. And. Oh wow! So it's the one year anniversary. Yeah, was uh, October third, I think. Fantastic. But it's basically I, I'm writing a new piece of flash fiction every week. Uh, five twelve words or fewer, and is that how you define flash fiction? Is five twelve? Uh, different people have different definitions. I What's don't think the there's general? generally it's anything under a thousand words. Okay. Um, when like fiction magazines and things like that generally want short stories to be two thousand words or more. Mm-hmm. Um, so flash fiction, I think, is fairly recent. So the market for that is still developing and. Um, now there's also there are also people doing really short fiction on Twitter, so 140 uh-huh. characters or, or fewer. Yeah, yeah, 140 characters per yeah. chapter. Well, for the whole story, oh, actually, the whole story. there's a, a a site called Thaumatrope, which mm-hmm. does they mostly do horror, mm-hmm. but it's always you know one tweet is the whole story. Interesting. Yeah, so it's there are a lot of different people are trying different kinds of things. So um, my idea with five twelve words was I would try a different story every week and part of it was just to keep myself writing Mm -hmm. um and a lot of it is kind of experimental and not necessarily very good but hopefully some of them are but it's not just you're not just writing you're also releasing audio files um i was i did that for for the first year Mm -hmm. um and there was a podcast and they're actually they're all still online Mm -hmm. so if you go to the site you can actually still download the mp3s and listen to me read my stuff. Um, but starting this year, I'm, I'm doing a second year. I, I don't know how long I'm going to keep doing it, mm-hmm. but it's going to be at least two years now. And this year I'm doing illustrations. To go with them instead? Yeah, instead of the audio. So mm-hmm. like the drawings or like uh, photo illustration type things. Just something visual Yeah, yeah. to illustrate the mm-hmm. story. And is that kind of kind of cheating though? Because what a picture's worth a thousand words, so now it's well, you know, you know, <laughs> fifteen hundred. You could argue, <laughs> <laughs> but the actual words, yeah, it's still five twelve or fewer. So, what inspired you to start five twelve words or fewer? And then I want to jump back a little bit to when we first met you and something that you said on the show. Uh oh, <laughs> <laughs> that could be bad. Um, okay, I have a big memory. So, uh, so last. Fall, I did a writing workshop called Viable Paradise, mm-hmm. um, and this is kind of um, I'm trying to focus on writing for the next uh, two or three years. You're uh, playing and, into my question very well. Yeah, <laughs> so I wanted to I wanted to do something that was going to keep me writing on a regular schedule mm-hmm. and sort of um, not necessarily put my name out there so much, but just start to let people know what I was doing and to, you know, have something in a public place so that, you know, the sort of shame of not having a story done every week for my friends to look at would keep me going. And also to see, you know, are people really interested in this kind of thing? Um, is this something I could develop into, you know, something I could actually sell or do longer term? I have heard that the most successful authors treat writing like a job and that they get mm-hmm. up yeah, in the morning absolutely. and they sit down and they start writing. They have their breakfast, they have mm-hmm. their coffee, and they start writing. Yep. And they write for however many hours they have told themselves they're going to write, and they have their work day undisturbed. Mm-hmm. Do you try to do that? 
try. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you make the attempt. Don't yeah. Don't always succeed. I mean, it's my wife and I have this sort of thing. Neither of us is working regular job right now, mm -hmm. so we trade off weeks. So one week she's the boss, and the next week I'm the boss. So the boss gets to decide. <laughs> If we're, you know, if we're gonna go out one day or go do something or stay at home and work, and this is how we're gonna work that day. Um, so different writers do have different routines. Yeah. Like some like to write early in the morning, some like to do it late at night, and some people have, you know, um, a certain space that they like to write in or whatever. Yeah. Um, it's different for everyone, but everyone says, you know, you have to do it every day and. Just to keep yourself in the habit. You and, have to develop your own Yeah, you need to habits. find your own style. But um, a lot of people say, you know, it, it takes three things. You need a talent, passion, and discipline. And you really need all three of those. Because yeah. if, you, if you have the talent and the passion, but you're not disciplined enough to sit down every day and write and actually finish something, then it's not going to... It's not going to get you very far. I would say that the least important of those three items is probably the talent, because if you have enough discipline, and you yes, have some enough, people would agree with you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, the talent. I mean, not yeah, every author is a talented writer. Yeah, well, there are know? different kinds of talent. Exactly. I mean, people well, people like to complain about certain authors, like, oh, the writing's so bad. How could they get this published? Why but the people read it? Fantastic. But, yeah, you know, but the, yeah. there's something there for yeah. people to to really get interested in. Yeah. All right, now we're going to take a step back to what month was Bar Camp? Anybody? Bar Camp okay. Portland, two thousand nine. I think it was um, May. In May. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna agree with you for the <laughs> sake of argument. I think I said something about it in my blog post. I don't know. <laughs> um, we, in Bar Camp style, put up a giant post-it and said, "Anybody who wants to come, Strange of Life, fill out your post-it, stick it on the wall," and that's how we met Curtis. And I wanted to have him back right away when I met him because he has a fantastic <laughs> voice for podcasting. And, and you know, diabolical planning me was like, yes, we could do an entire hour with Curtis. And I could just <laughs> listen to him talk. It'd be great. But then when we talked to you, I was interested and fascinated, especially in the fact that you and your wife intentionally stopped what you were doing, picked up, and mm -hmm. moved to Portland. Yes. So that you could try your hand at writing mm -hmm. what on earth made you want to do that um we're crazy <laughs> <laughs> i can respect that there, there yeah <laughs> there are a few there's kind of a long story behind that but mm -hmm. the short version is i've always been interested in writing and i would like to see if i can make a career out of this mm -hmm. um, i was a software engineer for many years mm -hmm. in um, california in the bay area where the software engineers are yeah. often, yeah. <laughs> yeah, as it happens. And a few years ago, we, um, my wife and I were on a trip for our anniversary, and we were talking about, you know, it was kind of sort of a, a, a ref, very um, reflective conversation. Like mm -hmm. we were thinking about, you know, our life together and, you know, what we wanted to do and all that kind of stuff. And... I know this is kind of mushy. But. No, it's okay. I, you know, the reason that we do Strange of Life mm -hmm. is that my husband and I wanted a project we could work on together. Oh, see, that's that's so, great. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. Yeah. So, and we decided, you know, we're just going to go for it. We're going to mm -hmm. save some money and find a place that's less expensive, cost of living wise, which than is the almost, Bay Area, which uh, is almost, almost everywhere. anywhere. <laughs> yeah, and there's another, not LA, but anywhere yeah, else. <laughs> no, there's another long story behind that, which mm -hmm. involves a huge spreadsheet and lots of research, but <laughs> <laughs> and Thai restaurants. Mm -hmm. But eventually, we we did, we picked Portland, mm -hmm. and we've been here for just over a year, and we we really love it. And you guys have really. Um, as far as I can see, when I you know I look at the tweets and I hear what mm -hmm. projects you're working on, you've really ingrained yourself into the Portland culture. I'm doing my best. Yeah. I mean, we it's it's been really easy for us to be very lazy. Cause I think that's part of the Portland culture to a certain extent. That, that is, could be. Is to be able to just kind but, of like dig in and yeah, but I, I, it's I, the I, rain. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think it also takes some time to kind of get to know an, an area and, and the people yeah. in it. It's not like I didn't want to kind of just jump into a lot of things and, and I don't know, interject myself into things without knowing something about them first. So I feel like you know, I, I've 
been to a few of the tech events now and I feel like I kind of know, you know, who the people are and what they like to do and what the different camps are all about. Mm -hmm. So that's been good. Portland reminds me a lot. And I've never even had this thought before. And when you said you didn't want to interject yourself into something before you knew more about it, Mm -hmm. Portland reminds me a lot of the whole like great melting pot of the United States thing, because everybody loves to be in Portland and everyone's like, I'm a Portlander, Mm -hmm. I'm a Portlander, but no one's actually really from Portland. We've all come from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. I'm not from Portland. (laughs) He's from Portland. Dr. Normal is from Portland. He's a Portland native, but uh, I grew up in California and Texas. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, I grew up in California, so... It took me a while to, you know, get used to Portland, too. Um, Before we wander too far from writing, next month Mm -hmm. is NaNoWriMo. Yes. Are you going to do that? Yes, I am. Dear Lord, you're just as crazy (laughs) as I am. Yeah, I've been doing it for several years now. Yeah. And it's it's a really great experience. I mean... How many many years have you done it? um, I think I've done it six years. How many years have you finished? four of them the last four, four. that's yeah that's see impressive. the thing is I, I i find well two things i mean one i've talked to people who you know can just put out words mm-hmm. right, or put words on paper really really quickly like mm-hmm. i talked to one guy who did nanowrimo and finished it in three or four days that's it, which that's, is insane that's insane <laughs> um does he was but, he just typing his abcs no, like actually writing. Wow. But I mean, the thing is, some people can can do that, yeah. and and I find that I can I can write a lot of words, but whether or not they'll be they'll be good is a yeah. different matter, and that takes more planning and you know, thinking, and a lot of the the stuff that I do when I'm writing fiction is not actually the you know the the act of typing it's sort of critical thinking so about mental storyboarding and yeah and just figuring things out really uh, in 2007 mm-hmm. i did nanorama for the first time and it was nuts <laughs> and i managed it, to finish one day early because dr normal told me to lock myself in my bedroom and uh, he brought well, good, chinese takeout home so that him. i could finish good for him and then in 2008, I decided I was going to do it again. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know what? I, I've i never done anything with the with the book I wrote. It was a little over 50,000 mm-hmm. words. But that's not the point. The point was for me to write <laughs> yes, something exactly. and, to, and to finish mm-hmm. it. Um, so 2008, I decided I'm going to do it again. Yeah. And I got myself ready. I even, I even started a little bit of an outline, mm-hmm. which you're allowed to do. Yeah, yeah, I was absolutely. not breaking any rules. Absolutely. And then... I got an email that changed the month of November for me, which was that I was accepted. Um, my talk, my presentation was accepted for Ignite Portland. Oh, yeah. Mine was too, actually. <laughs> and I said, oh, my, how am I going to do this? And then Dr. Noel said, I'm going to do NanoPodmo. And I said, how are we going to do NanoPodmo? How am I going to do my Ignite presentation? Because I had put my Ignite presentation in on a lark. I didn't think anyone was going to accept the presentation Mm -hmm. because it was how to bluff your way through a presentation, basically. (laughs) I was like, this makes no sense. Why would you let me talk? So I was signed up, but then I said, no, I can't do this. Mm. And so when I saw that you'd been accepted to talk Mm. at Ignite Portland this year. In November. (laughs) Yeah, that's going to be interesting. I wonder if he's going to do NaNoWriMo, too. How are you going to do both? Hey, do you have your presentation ready? Are your slides oh, God, done? No, 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 no. What's the due date for the slides? November 1st. November 1st. And I'm well, actually going to be down in California next week for a convention. <laughs> so that's going to be real interesting. But, um, yeah, oh. but it's, it's actually good that I'm going to be there because I need to meet a guy to take some pictures of something for the for presentation. The presentation. <laughs> what is your presentation on? Uh, my presentation, I called it in the proposal, how to solve any puzzle in 47 minutes or less, mm-hmm. which is totally misleading, but it's going to be I about, think the titles are always misleading. <laughs> yeah, you know, could be. <laughs> it's going to be about? It's going to be about puzzle hunts mm-hmm. and treasure hunts and uh, these sort of games that um, people play. I just <laughs> want everyone to note my incredible segue from writing <laughs> that was very to smooth. the puzzle hunt. Very smooth. Um, because this is something that you know a lot about. Yeah, we. Um, you recently had a puzzle hunt in Portland. Yeah, it was called the Dash. It mm-hmm. was on September thirteenth, mm-hmm. and that went really well. It was a. Uh, sm- so the Dash, the idea behind the Dash was that 
a bunch of different cities across the nation would um, collaborate. So people in each city would contribute uh, one clue, one clue per city. Okay. Or one puzzle. We, we call them clues. Mm -hmm. And then each city would run their hunt on the same day. So you'd have different locations, but the theme would be the same and the puzzles would be the same. So mm -hmm. you have all these different people able to sort of share the experience of doing this uh, puzzle hunt or treasure hunt or whatever you want to call so it. So for people who aren't familiar with the puzzle hunt, what are the clues like? What is it that you're trying to achieve? Because this is not a bunch of people. I think that a lot of people imagine one large room with a bunch of people sitting mm -hmm. around working on a puzzle, but it's not. It's yeah. like a free range across the city. Yeah, well... There are a lot of different types of puzzle hunts. So mm -hmm. there is one type where it is, um, I call them conference room hunts, mm -hmm. where you mostly sit in you know a room and you get a lot of puzzles, multiple puzzles at the same time. And you have usually a large team, like 10 or 12 people working on all of these. And the goal is to you know, solve as many as possible. Mm -hmm. um, the dash was a little different. It was kind of, it was kind of modeled after... Um, some events in the Bay Area called Bangs, mm -hmm. Bay Area Night Games, mm -hmm. which are actually more like day games now. They've kind of evolved. <laughs> but it's um, it was a one-day event on foot. We did it in downtown Portland. And you got a series of clues. So you got one clue, you solve it, and it tells you where to go to find the next next clue. And you kind of follow this trail around until you, you know, solve as many clues as you want or mm -hmm. you finish. And then we have a sort of a party at the end where all the teams get to the end location and, you know, they can hang out and talk to each other and get some drinks. So it's kind of like the scavenger hunts that kind of, yeah. we did as, like, kids mm -hmm. and birthday parties yeah, and stuff. Yeah, but with puzzles. But with puzzles. Yeah. And the puzzles can be really anything at all. And mm -hmm. there's some word puzzles, um, like kind of like crosswords or um, acrostics. Um, there can be things like Sudoku. Um, but we, when we do the events, we try to come up with types of puzzles or presentations of puzzles so that are kind of creative and new, things you may, have, may not have seen exactly before. Mm -hmm. So in the dash, there was one puzzle, which was, well, I'll tell you about a couple. Uh, one of them was... Um, a cemetery. So the theme was uh, kind of an old west ghost town. Okay. And the the story um, was you had to go around to all these locations and solve the clues, and each one solved to a keyword. Mm -hmm. And when you got all of them, you could kind of figure out you know what had happened to the town. <coughs> and one of the clues me, was uh, no problem um, was a cemetery. Mm -hmm. So it was a set of gravestones, and each one had a name on it and a year um, but the names if you if you read them out loud were all puns mm -hmm. like um, I'm trying to remember what one of them so okay so one of them was Anton M you know something I'm trying to remember Anton no Anton Nimavout was the name mm-hmm and if you say that out loud, Anton Nimavout. Anton Nimavout. Anton Nimavout. Yeah, Anton you kind of have to Nimavout. change the emphasis. I'm trying to. I, I keep thinking it's anatomy something, but yeah. Anton Nimavout. I think it's because I have a preconception. I'm trying to work on the word anatomy, and I don't yeah, know it's, why. Yeah, so they can be tricky, but yeah. th it was antonym of oh. out. Antonym. Which is in, mm -hmm. and if you, so you have to kind of... See, I would be bad at it. I would be very bad yeah. at this. <laughs> well, you know, in the actual clue, you have all these uh, different They're things. There were like yeah. 25 of them, and a lot of um, solving puzzles, um, which I'm going to talk about at Ignite, is mm -hmm. you have to look at look for patterns or recognize when things um, look weird, like why, why is this thing weird like this? And, mm -hmm. um, and in this case, uh, if you got enough of those, uh, sort of phrases figured out, like antonym of out, and one of them was a uh, constant for gravity. Mm -hmm. Um, eventually you saw that, um, if anyone's looking at, so all the puzzles are actually on playdash.org, okay. the website for the dash. And if anyone's trying to solve them, you should not listen to the next two minutes. <laughs> because, alert, you know, these are spoilers. Alert. But anyway, so you got, each one turns into a letter of the alphabet. Mm -hmm. um, except for Z, I think. So A through Y. And then there was um, 
a couple more layers that you had to go through to actually get out a message. Mm -hmm. But that that was one puzzle, and the one that we made, um, Deanne and I, for Portland, was a set of, um, they were cardboard, and they were printed to look like graham crackers with chocolates and marshmallows on them. Mm -hmm. um, and um, at the bottom of each one was a picture of a character from a, a movie, like a Western movie. Mm -hmm. Um, and this one, th this was the simplest clue by far in, in the dash. Um, people solved it. I think one team solved it in like three minutes, but they've done a lot of puzzle hunts. Mm -hmm. Um, but this one, you had to identify the characters. So for example, the pairs included, um, uh, like th Christian Bale and Russell Crowe from 310 to Yuma. So you mm -hmm. had to say, oh, these two guys were in the same movie, mm -hmm. put them together. So then you had two graham crackers with chocolates and marshmallows in a certain pattern. And Is it like a domino setup? No. no? So, uh, so on the outside of the envelope, we had kind of a hint. Okay. Um, or we wrote s'mores in mm -hmm. big letters. Mm -hmm. And it was um, because the marshmallows are round mm -hmm. and the chocolate pieces were kind of rectangular and long. Like dots and dashes. Oh, so it's so Morse, code. Morse code. Yeah. Morse so, code. That's yeah. so cute. So once you got the pairs together, you could read across the symbols mm -hmm. and then get a message out of that. So very there are a lot of different kinds of puzzles. And I, I think, like that. That's very clever. Yeah. So I think my biggest challenge for Ignite is trying to get it down to five minutes because, I mean, I could talk about this for hours and mm -hmm. lots of people could. And yeah, that's the that's the fun part <laughs> about Ignite, though, is getting that information that mm -hmm. you might not normally get yeah. in a five-minute dose that you can swallow. So if yeah. you want to find out more about it, you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm going to have to figure that out. Is there going to be another dash? We're talking about it. We're um, talking about doing another one in the spring of spring next dash. year. And Dan and I would like to do more events like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, when we were in the Bay Area... Our team, like our friends and I, and we ran um, like five or six uh, of the weekend events, mm -hmm. which are more like marathons. There. How long is it? Is a puzzle hunt usually? It depends on what the event is. Like the dash was one day, so mm -hmm. we started at ten, and we ended around six. I think everyone was done by six, so like eight hours. Um, the full weekend ones are you drive around. Um, and they go from you know, Saturday morning to Sunday early afternoon. Mm. So it's like 30, 36 hours, depending. It's a lot of puzzling. And yeah. And that's, I mean, they're all kind of different experiences, but they have certain things in common, which is, you know, you get outside and you go to interesting locations, which you may not have known about before, mm -hmm. which is one of my favorite things about it. And you get puzzles, which... You know, you, um, and some of them are very closely integrated with the locations. Like um, we just did an event at Disneyland last weekend that was put on by a company called Shinteki. And I was very jealous that you were at Disneyland last yeah. week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was all of fun. Um, yeah. But um, there were things that you had to be at Disneyland to observe things. Like you had to go on this ride and observe certain things mm -hmm. and then use that to solve the puzzle. That's so. tough work to do, <laughs> I tell you. Um, before yeah. we wrap up and head into after hours, I mm -hmm. want everyone to tell, I want you to tell everyone once again where they can find you on Twitter and what sites they can find if they go to snout.org. Uh, sure. And sure. why are you not an aardvark? Well, look at me. <laughs> I'm just asking. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's another long story. <laughs> okay, uh, we'll, we'll, okay. We'll tackle so, that maybe in after hours. So my personal website is snout.org mm -hmm. and it basically has links to all the other stuff i think on the sidebar right now yeah, 512 is at the top and then i have another page where it lists all the stories that i've completed so all the nanorimo stuff mm -hmm. um, a couple short stories that i'm published in other places um and it links to my blog and things like that and our road trip blog from last week, uh, last year, sorry, <laughs> um, which would, um, our cats posted on. So that's kind of fun. You have cute cats. Yeah. There's a picture of them and I assume mm -hmm. your wife. 
Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And your Twitter name? Once Twitter again? name is Sparkle. S P A R C K L. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you, you in the in the after hours. Okay. And please join us next week, the night before Halloween, with horror author Jamie Person. Mm-hmm.